The vice president says, despite economic and security challenges, Nigeria is on the verge of a breakthrough. And just when we thought we had seen the last of their battle loot, eight two billion naira of faces on an island. This is Plus Politics, and I am Felicity Ezewike. Vice President Yamiyoshi Banjo has urged Nigerians not to allow the rhetoric of division to blow their vision of unity of the country because we are at the verge of a breakthrough. I'm being joined by Adeni Kunu and Lulu Elegbe, both are political analysts. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for coming on the program. Thanks Thank you for having us. I'll start with you, Lulu. Okay. Do you believe or agree with the president? a uh, vice president, rather, that we are on the verge of a breakthrough? Well, uh, as vice president, I'm assuming he has access to information that we don't. Um, so I'm not sure what that is based on. Um, the evidence, I don't want to say doesn't show it, because um, if you look at where we're two years ago, a year ago, where we are today, um, it does seem like things, um, at least to, to do with the economy, seem a bit better. Um, security things are not better, they're actually worse. But I think in that, in um, the forum where he said this, he went on to talk about the fact that the, ver the, the fact that we're on the verge of this breakthrough is why we're facing um, a number of challenges. Because when you're about to get a break, the theory is when you're about to get a breakthrough, you have um, all sorts of challenges that you have to overcome to get to that point. And it's, uh, I mean, I, I, I hear him, I get what he's saying. Do I agree with it? I'm not sure, to be honest, um, because we've had these sorts of comments before. Um, I said earlier that Nigeria has been on the verge of a breakthrough since 1960, and somehow we've just never got there. Um, are we going to get there now? I'll, obviously, I hope so. I try to be as optimistic as possible, but um, the signs, as well, as if I was going to base it on security challenges, the signs don't look good. Um, if I was going to base it on infrastructural development, yes, this administration has actually done quite a lot. Um, if I was going to base this on how divided we are as a country, the signs don't look good because. I don't think, I wasn't born before this, during the Civil War, but I've read enough of Nigerian history to know what happened during that period. So in and your estimation, yeah. um, in some areas we might be approaching that breakthrough, but in other areas we're yeah, not Yeah, because close. I think my, my worry isn't so much, my worry is more the areas where we are, I don't think we're there, because we're too divided as a people. And what worries me, the reason I brought up the Civil War was because the, I can't remember any time in our history that we've been as divided as we are today apart from the Civil War period. I'm not saying we're headed to a Civil War, that's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying that I'm just trying to highlight how divided we've become today along religious lines, along ethnic lines, along social lines, it's along political lines. So, um, it, and let me get you straight. You you are not sure where to stand, or you because if you're saying we're more divided now, yeah. then there wouldn't be any breakthrough. Yeah, but we're divided today is the reason why I'm not sure I get the statement from the vice president because we're too divided. We if we're going to have a breakthrough, as because Nigeria is a nation at the end of the day, we're not. Yes, we're made up of a number of different ethnic groups, different religions, and people who don't even have any religion, which which should be normal. But the problem is we don't we tend not to see the other person. We, we tend to see ethnicity before we see nationality. Let, and that's let me a big bring problem, um, Kunu in. Do you share his thoughts? Well, I really have to understand the breakthrough the vice president is talking about. Yeah, but he, he, he qualified that breakthrough in, in his uh, speech when he went to see the president for the Salah celebration. He said that in spite of the myriad of challenges that we face, insecurity and the likes, that Nigeria is on the verge of breakthrough. Okay, so let me, let me, you... let me say this. As much as I 
read up all the comments and saw some clips of that particular, uh, you know, get together that they had. I must say very emphatically that oftentimes the definition of your breakthrough could be actually very different from the definition of another person's breakthrough. But ultimately, Nigeria belongs to Nigerians. So I'm looking at the breakthrough that we see uh, the smaller tribes of the country get the needed recognition that they should get, where the federal government would hands off national resources uh, before 2023, and they'll hand over the resources to the respective state. I'm looking at a situation where the breakthrough will be a review of the constitution and there will be local government autonomy 100% where their funds come to them. I'll also be looking at a breakthrough that will allow states to control the resources of their land and not have control over the land while the federal government has control over the resources. I'm trying to say that perhaps those are the kind of breakthrough he has envisioned, which will be uh, in alignment with what the people themselves want. Because the breakthrough that perhaps doesn't uh, take cognizance of what has affected our problems of unity. Let's look at what has been happening in the United Kingdom. Uh, Donald Trump is on a three-day visit to the UK, and they have been celebrating the veterans because of the DD landing of June the 5th of 1944, on the verge of the end of the Second World War. Now, that is significant in the history of the European peoples, uh, particularly the life of the veterans of the British uh, military forces. Does Nigeria even acknowledge that the civil war we had should be a national day and reconciliatory moves are made where those who fought in Biafra will be alongside those who fought uh, with the federal troops and there will be recognition of the veterans and more or less like uh, try to talk about the issues that many persons have told their children who were not born there and they still reel in the pain of their losses and deaths and hunger that happened then. So I'm saying here that unity I cannot be jumped over. Unity is a process. And until you go to where this unity is tethered and cut it off or you lose that particular rope, then you're just dancing in circles. Yeah, I, I don't want to speculate really, but you know, sometimes when they say breakthrough, you mentioned something earlier that maybe they know something that we don't. Remember in the election uh, period, we'll get back to the rest part of his comments uh, in a bit, but during the electioneering period, we heard the next level. On May 29, we usually hear a speech, but there was no speech on that day. Expectedly, we're seeing uh, we, we're, we're going to get something on June 12, which is the inaugural Democracy Day um, for this second term of Buhari's administration. Now, I'm thinking, is there something in the kitty for that June 12 on the next level? Let me let me let me ask you. Okay, I want to say that um, no matter how your plans are. It is respectful that when people gather at your inauguration, having voted for you, it is respectful you make a comment. People don't gather at your events, even if you're celebrating to... No, my, my com the comment I'm referring to here is in regards to the next level. Because well, if I, I, he says we're well, on a breakthrough... Well, I, I am saying yeah. that for the president, because if the vice president speaks, let me say this, he's speaking in his capacity also as the first man. Don't forget the president usually you know, nominates his vice and anytime a vice president speaks, he speaks in the capacity that the offices he holds give to him. I'm saying that on that inauguration day, whatever it is that uh, they've given us reasons for not making a comment wouldn't be tenable. A vote of thanks wouldn't be too much for you to give. As for, for people who actually came from wide and far, if you're waiting until June 12 where you want to have the world leaders and you address them, I don't want to take that for you. And don't forget that after uh, the inauguration, he had to go to Saudi, Saudi Arabia, Arabia. Now, and there he another... spoke. It's, not, it's connected where he had to speak on the terrorism problem. Why don't you reassure the people briefly before you jet out? That's why I'm saying, that's what I'm suggesting. That Let me get your reaction. You said something earlier that... Um, you don't know on what basis. Just to paraphrase what you said, that you know, he's making the statement that we are on the verge of a breakthrough. Is there a possibility 
that on June 12, we will hear something on the next level that might reassure Nigerians like Mr. Kuno has said? <laughs> no, the short answer is no. I, I mean, yes, there will most likely there will be a speech, and but I don't expect the speech to be any different from um, any other speech we've heard from the presidency, to be honest. Is there something that is going to be in that speech that suddenly changes perceptions and changes momentum and all that? I don't think so. I, I'll be, don't get me wrong, I hope there is. I just don't believe there will be. I don't see how there will be. It's not, because at the end of the day, right, like I think like my friend said here, I cannot think of any inauguration I've watched where there was no inauguration speech. I can't, I'm trying, I've been trying to think. Maybe they're setting a I new trend. I can't think of any. And I, again, I don't know what the reasons were. If it's to say something on June 12, again, I don't know. But the, we're, at, we're at a critical point in Nigeria right now. And maybe, again, maybe that's why the vice president is talking about a breakthrough, because when you get to a certain threshold, then you the must only, move forward. Yeah, the only hopefully. Other, yeah, the only, the only All right, let's still talking about the visit of the VP to the president, yeah. uh, his Salah homage, let's put it that way. Uh, I want to take a quote from something um, from his speech. He said, the, the reason for his visit was to demonstrate to, and the celebration, uh, the Muslim celebration, was to demonstrate to our people that this country is a united country. Now, my question is, does religion really bring us together as a people, or is it a major divisive um, element in this country, considering the Boko Haram uh, situation? You want to yeah. take that up? Yeah, I, was, okay. I, was, I mean, the, it's two things. A, religion should bring us together as a people, but it doesn't. It divides us. It, and one of, I think one of, my, one of the issues I've always had around religion, I'm a Christian, but one of the closest people to me and a mentor to me in many, in many ways is a Muslim, is an, is an Alhaji, um, but he's married to a Christian. Um, one of my closest friends in university was a Muslim. Um, another very close friend of my brother is, uh, is Anibo guys from, I think, Abia or Anambra. My point is we, we tend to put up, put up these artificial barriers because at the end of the day, uh, let me give a personal example. I was buying suya once in Ibadan and the, uh, so I got talking with the guy making the suya and he, I can't remember, I think it was over a Salah period or something like that. And we got talking about prayer and that sort of thing. And he made a comment that I can never forget. He said he doesn't understand why there's all this issue about Christian, Muslim, that he said if he's hungry and a Christian gives him food, will he not eat it? Or if a Christian is hungry and a Muslim gives him food, will he not eat it? So if they, my point is at, the, at our very core, we're exactly the same. We have exactly the same needs. But the reality of to... the situation, let, let's, let's no, be I, I get, but the reality no, of the situation that. is we have a part of this country mm. where a certain group of people are saying that my religion is superior to yours. No, but I, I don't and agree And you with that, must so. accept it. That's, what I, that's why I'm asking this question. He's saying that religion... Um, to demonstrate to the people that this country is a united one, but how can we be united yeah, but, when we have these issues? Yeah, but the point, the, but, but that's my point though. It, religion should bring us together because what religion is supposed to teach is one God um, loving everybody, love your neighbors. There's no religion that doesn't teach love your neighbors. Every single religion does it. But do we love our neighbors? No. Even we, even we as Christians, the Bible teaches love your neighbor, this is what you do. Even love your enemies, actually, not just your neighbors. But what do we do with our enemies? We curse them, we <laughs> cast the them by and, and all money. the things we do. Okay. But that's not what the Bible teaches about, about enemies. So if the Bible is saying love your enemies, then what is it saying about love, about your neighbors, if it can say love your enemies? But do we do that? So when, when you say there are people in certain parts of the country that say that, it's my religion or no other religion. There, there are people in my religion who think the same way. They just don't say it out. Well, still yesterday, honest, yes, okay. Sorry, yesterday I, I put up a post saying happy Eid to all my Muslim 
brothers and sisters. I should show you some of the messages I got from Christian friends asking me why I would post something like that. that how can I say Muslims are my brothers and sisters? And for the life of, for like five minutes, I had to think that how was, are my friends with people like this? Because at the end of the day, why we're all one. We're all well, one that nation. Is we're not what, a what, secular what we, nation. That's what we would want to see. And sometimes the people that commit these crimes mm. or try to say these things look sane, look educated, look smart. They but then you worry about, yeah. So, but still on the religious aspect of things, mm. I want to come to you, um, Mr. Kunu. Now, I want. Let me start with this quote from that same speech, still on the vice presidency. It's he's okay. on his, um, on our vice, what's that In word? The eye of the song, yes. Right? He says, as I said, our country, quote open, as I said, our country is destined for greatness, and I know that the almighty God will lead us to uh, that greatness. And as we go day by day towards that greatness, those who want to hold us back, the Lord God Almighty will prevent them from doing so, end of quote. Now, the reason I'm quoting this is that many critics worry that the VP, who is also a professor, uh, but a pastor, um, is deterred from truly taking in the magnitude of the overall situation in Nigeria due to his religious perspe uh, perspective. Like you mentioned that your Facebook post, people were reacting to it. You posted a message wishing people good. Now, the president, the vice president, it, doesn't that worry you that that kind of thought is coming up, that the vice president might have his thinking a little bit flawed? because of his religious views. Well, it is very evident from what you said uh, that he allowed his religious um, inclination to get him subsumed. And I think it is very important for leaders to separate uh, their religious affiliations from their respective offices. Let me look at the two greatest English countries that Nigeria has affinity with. Uh, that has to be the UK that introduced Christianity to us, talking about the 19th century. And um, I'd also like to go to some other big countries of the world where the Islamic religion itself came in. You can't divorce Saudi Arabia from this. Now, I'm going to pitch two things, basically, for the British people and the Americans. The holiday we have, especially the Eid holidays, are not celebrated as national holidays in these countries. They are only celebrated by people who could take leave from work and excuse that their children go to school so that they can celebrate the holiday. But in this part of the world, it is a national holiday. That's one. Secondly, if you look at the problem of underdevelopment that we have in majority of the northern parts of the country, I did a comparison of the poverty and backwardness there to places like Saudi Arabia, places like Oman, places like Qatar, uh, a place, of course, like Bahrain, you'd find out that these are also Muslim societies, but the level of advancement and education you have there is amazing. It then tells you that a religion cannot indeed uplift a society out of poverty and retrogression or stagnation if it continues to control the machinery of governance and its administration, which is what I want to emphasize. Therefore, all our leaders must understand that religion, first of all, have a place of personal impact in the lives of people and little of national uh, relevance. If I must do a very scientific analysis of these questions that you have put before me. So the vice president uh, should, I expect, know better but in that instance, he lost the consciousness of nationalism. He lost the fact that uh, humanity within the political circle where his offices are, are actually make him uh, actually tread should not be second place. So I think very sincerely that we have to do a lot of review where we are able to separate. We can't not be uh, a nation without God, I agree. But to the extent that people make effective use of it in their personal lives and it is divorced from governance and politics so that when we have to deal with issues, they'll be dealt with as appropriately as possible. Well, uh, that is left to be seen. Um, still on this speech, because that's basically what we're focusing on at this time. Um, I want to look at another quote.
because mm -hmm. this time you guys, okay. it's all, it always makes sense to yeah. take a look at these quotes and see um, what we can learn from them. Those who want to stoke up embers of division would not be allowed to do so. This is a common phrase by our politicians. We know they use it all the time. There are those who say that this indicates a failure in leadership and securing the nation if they see they seem they are seen to always refer to unknown forces. If you don't know your enemies, how would you fight it fight them? Let me bring that question to you. What's your reaction to this perception that it shows a a failure in leadership? Well, if 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 we're talking about so that particular quote, I assume refers to security yes. because um, if we're talking about people who are trying to um, turn the country upside down, that sort of thing. But I think would I call it a failure of leadership um, in a way? Yes, because when you look at um, the killings in, I mean, around the country, but most especially in, in places like Benue, in Jos, in Zamfara, and again, this is, and this doesn't even include Borno, where that has been at the epicenter of the Boko Haram menace. For the last um, four years, we've been told that Boko Haram has been technically defeated and all those other terms that don't make any sense to me. Um, but a lot of the time, we, when you tell us Boko Haram has been defeated, I mean, don't get me wrong, I get that from where we were five or six years ago with Boko Haram and where we are today are completely different. Where Boko Haram could rampage, rampage through 10, 12 local government areas and sack them completely. I don't, they don't seem to have that capability anymore. So yes, that's an improvement, but has does that mean Boko Haram has been defeated? Of course not. And they keep my, I think my angst is that they keep pushing this narrative that Boko Haram has been defeated. How, I mean, we hear these things every day. Yes, there's, it's improved. If you can, if they can just end it there and say it's improved, fine, I'll agree with them. Has Boko Haram been defeated? I mean, we see, we see these stories almost every day. There was still an attack, um, I think, earlier this week on, or at the weekend, yeah. where a military base was sacked. I mean, you, 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 it, so when you start telling me that Boko Haram has been defeated, I'm not sure I understand what that means, because the reality on the ground is that people are still dying. People, and this is Boko Haram. This is not even talking about the other issues to do with mining and cattle rustling and herdsmen. Yeah, well, I, I will have to all interrupt those, because we are almost, those other things. We are almost out of time on this segment, but I'd like to hear your thoughts. I'm going to paraphrase that question in a different way. What should be the phrase that should be a cliche when it comes to um, talking about the general security of the country, the general situation in the country, when uh, our politicians and our leaders referred to unknown people who are trying to sabotage their efforts. In your opinion, what should re replace that particular phrase? I think it should be that in any country, you'd find people whose opinions will be different from what government holds as true. But whoever believe that Nigeria um, wouldn't work, I should have a change of mind because we'll continue to work hard to ensure that the country works for the interest of all. We know that we need to work better. We need to unite the people. We agree that there are certain things we didn't do right. But we can assure you that we'll continue to put in our best to make sure Nigeria is livable for all. That's better. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. All pass on this segment. We'll be right back. We'll take a break. And when we return, we'll be talking about former president Sunny Abacha's loot. From way back, we'll bring you those. Stay with us.